Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, we were discussing uh, dominant strategy. Two cases we discussed where each of the players have a dominant strategy and another case where one of them have a dominant strategy and both the cases unique equilibrium was guaranteed right we have shown. Now, suppose uh, can there be a case where no dominant strategy if there is no dominant strategy what will happen there is a beautiful game called battle of sexes ok. So, that game you will see that uh, there is no dominant strategy and it will have multiple equilibrium ok. Say exactly like that ok battle of sexes game I am coming ok. So, what is the Nash equilibrium? Nash equilibrium let us define Nash equilibrium. So, in the earlier lecture the two games and when we told that one unique equilibrium is granted that is also Nash equilibrium ok. Once you know the Nash, Nash equilibrium definition in this light you can judge those two things you will understand the which we refer as equilibrium that is Nash equilibrium ok. What is Nash equilibrium? Nash equilibrium is basically a pair of strategies in this particular case. Why pair of strategies? That many strategies. Uh, uh, how many different players are participating? Here only two players are participating in the game that is why we are telling a pair of strategies. One strategy for me, another strategy for the other player ok. If three players are playing it is a tuple of strategies, one strategy from each of the players in that way that is the Nash equilibrium first. But that strategy how to uh, how uh, it should what clause it should satisfy so that it will be called a Nash equilibrium given the strategy of the other what will be my best say suppose suppose say top and bottom kind of thing right. So, suppose top is the best for me given when I know that column is going to choose left. So, given left top is the best for one person if parallelly it will also happen if this person knows that top is uh, other person's decision if other person is going to choose top left will be best for that person. So, it is a pair of so this is this is best given this given this not only that this is best given this ok. So, we need a pair of strategies pair uh, one strategy given that strategy for the other player which is the best for me given this strategy for me that is the best for that other player. So, if that way we get a pair of strategies that strategy pair of strategy is called Nash equilibrium ok. So, so it has two clause. So, top given left this is for row and left given top this is for column. If this is the case this top means the best one best left means here it is best ok. So, if this is the case best strategy is top given the left for other and best strategy is left given the top for this person ok. If that way then top left is will, will be a Nash equilibrium top left top is a one strategy for one player left is another strategy from the other player ok. So, that, that way so both way it should satisfy ok. Now, suppose now suppose say uh, girl boy ok this is action art action art this 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 game is called battle of sexes this game is a beautiful game it's about a uh, uh, would be couple ok and it's a long ago long back this game uh, uh, context is long ago right when there was no phone no mobile phone and all those things right so in a would be couple and they decided that tomorrow they will go for a movie together ok 
but they forgot to decide which movie hall they will visit ok. And uh, to actually two adjacent movie halls are there, one hall some action film is running, another hall some art film is showing ok. So, now when tomorrow movie going time came right, they are basically indecisive kind of situation, which hall they will go they did not decide ok. So, look at here if it happens to be the case that the hall where action movie is showing right, boy is going to that hall and girl is also going to that hall, then so they can enjoy together the movie right, that was the target, they will, they will watch the movie together wherever they want. But if this cell is generated, what is that? 0, 0 means what? Boy is going in one hall where action movie is uh, showing, but girl is going to the art, another hall basically. Okay. So, eventually they land in the two different halls. Okay. So, they have to watch separately that is why it is not that much enjoying to them. So, that is why 0, 0 for both of them that is the payoff structure. Exactly in this case this is 0, 0 and this is 1, 2. Okay. Look at here their first target is to watch the movie together. The second thing is these two payoff structure is telling another in, in important information hidden here. Boys usually like more action film and girls usually like more art film. Look at here their target is to watch the movie together. So, togetherness is satisfying when both are going to the action hall or both are going to the art hall. Okay. But when both are going to the action hall, look at here, boy is getting 2 and girl is getting 1 as satisfaction. Okay. That 1, 2, those are the uh, quantified, uh, quantified representation of the amount of satisfaction or amount of utility they will uh, extract from watching that movie, no, that way. Okay. So, alternatively when both are going to the art hall, look at here, boy is getting 1 and girl is getting 2. Okay, girl is getting more. So, one important information is hidden here and that boy's natural tendency to uh, go before the uh, or uh, go uh, to watch the action film and girl's natural uh, incentive to watch more uh, art film. Okay. That is usual way you as a, as, a, as a boy you may be different or another girl may be different, but that is the usual case. Okay. That is the thing. More importantly another hidden information is there, look at here, although boy wants action more uh, like to watch action movie, in this when this cell is generated what is happening? Boy is watching action movie only, but girl is watching art movie, right. So, both are getting 0, 0. So, essentially this girl is getting this one, no, this is from accompanying, uh, they want to uh, watch that together, right. So, that is why although boy is watching action movie, okay, he is getting 0 here and girl is also watching art movie film, she is getting also 0 because they are missing that togetherness, okay, exactly that way here also they are missing togetherness. Anyway, that is not the issue here. So, issue is here whether any equilibrium is here or not or any Nash equilibrium is here or not. Look at here first question is whether any of them have any dominant strategy. Look for boy one case he will get more here because he is comparing between 2 and 0, in another case this is 0 and 1. So, one case he is getting more by choosing action hall, another case he is getting more by choosing art hall. Exactly the same way girl, okay, one case so girl is comparing this, this pair of number, this 1 and 0 and this 0 and 2. So, one case she is getting more here, another case she is getting more here. So, none of them have any dominant strategy. So, if they do not have any of them uh, have any dominant strategy, then though we have to calculate or we have to uh, more uh, carefully see whether there is any Nash equilibrium or not, right. Okay. Because when at least one of them or both of them have dominant strategy, Nash equilibrium is guaranteed, we have shown that very easy to find out which is the equilibrium, right. In this case, look at here. See, if given action, for so suppose this is girl, okay. if boy know that girl is going to uh, go for action movie, what is the best for boy? Definitely boy will choose 2 because this thing girl is going to choose. So, boy is going to compare between effectively this 2 and 0, boy will choose action. 
So, boy best option is action given that if, if he knows that girl is going to action. What is the girl's point of view? If girl know that boy is going to choose going for action movie, then what girl will decide? So, action boy is going to this thing. So, girl will compare between these two numbers 1 and 0 and by 1 girl is get getting more than here 0 right. So, given action for boy action is the best for girl as well. So, this action action it is satisfying both the clauses of the Nash equilibrium. So, definitely action action is a Nash equilibrium here. Exactly same way this is also art art also another Nash equilibrium here. Why? Okay. If boy knows that girl is going to uh, go for art film, what is the best strategy for uh, boy? Boy will compare because girl is going to choose this art no, that time boy, boy will compare between these two numbers 0 and 1. So, by choosing art boy is getting more because by choosing action in that case boy will get 0, by choosing art boy will get 1 right. So, basically art is the best strategy given art from, from girl. So, this is the best for boy given knowing that art is going to be the girl's choice. Exactly the same way if you see from girl's perspective, if girl know that boy is going for art, boy is going for art. So, then girl will compare between these two numbers 0 and 2 and these two numbers comparison is telling that girl should choose art because by choosing art she will get 2 alternatively by choosing action she will get 0. Okay. So, here is more. Okay. So, art art also is satisfying the clauses of Nash equilibrium both way uh, matching kind of thing. So, uh, we are we are discussing uh, on peculiar game where multiple Nash equilibrium is there. Okay. One Nash equilibrium here another Nash equilibrium here. Okay. So, what we discuss? We discuss that all these games what we are discussing in this course those are called pure strategy pure strategy game strategy game. Okay. Other than that there is another kind of game called mixed strategy game which we are not discussing in this uh, course, okay. but in advanced game theory you can learn that okay. forget about those things. More specifically we are discussing pure strategy game. So, so, so we, we get three types of different types of game okay, where both have a dominant strategy unique equilibrium is guaranteed at least one of them have a dominant strategy again unique equilibrium is guaranteed. When none of them have a dominant strategy multiple equilibrium is there two equilibrium we are getting. So, natural question can come to your mind or some of your mind that sir can there be a situation where there is no equilibrium. Okay. Yes that can happen let us let us let us uh, choose one uh, payoff structure suppose this is the payoff structure. Okay, say suppose uh, 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay. Suppose this is left, that is right, this is top, and this is bottom. Okay, look at here what is happening. Okay. So, first question is is there any dominant strategy for this person suppose this is Mr. Rho and that is Mr. Mr. Column. Any of them have any dominant strategy? Okay, look at here if we compare these two number more for bottom these two number more for top. So, Rho does not have any dominant strategy exactly the same way these two numbers more is left these two numbers more is right. So, none of them have a dominant strategy. Now, the question is whether any of the uh, is there any Nash equilibrium or not, where there is no dominant strategy in the battle of success we have discussed that it is a multiple Nash equilibrium right. Here look at here given left when this row knows that column is going to choose left right that time what row will choose 
rho, rho will choose bottom because that time rho is comparing between these two numbers 1 and 2. So, rho will choose bottom. Now, if column knows that rho is going to choose bottom in that case if column's best thing is left then bottom left is an as equilibrium. Look when column knows that rho is choosing going to choose bottom what best is column what is the best for column it is not left there are right because column is comparing between these two numbers 1 and 3 right. So, by choosing right. So, this is suppose column and this is suppose rho. So, given columns left rho's best is top, but given rho's no given left not top bottom given left for column rho's best is bottom given bottom given bottom for row when this side we are taking given left this is the best for row given bottom for row right is the best for column exactly same way given right for column what is the best for row if rho knows that column is going to choose right it is best for rho is 1 and 3 so top. Now, given top for rho what is the best for column if column knows that rho is going to choose top column will compare between 1 and 2 so this is left left is the best for things. So, we are not getting any pair of strategies one strategy for rho and another strategy is column which can uh, fulfill both way requirement for the Nash equilibrium right. So, this is a peculiar game where there is no Nash equilibrium. So, what uh, four alternative types of games we have discussed here to introduce here actually main target to introduce dominant strategy and Nash equilibrium and in that context we are discussing that uh, if dominant strategy is there or dominant strategies are there okay, then the one Nash equilibrium is guaranteed in the absence of any dominant strategy two both the possibilities can happen multiple Nash equilibrium can appear no Nash equilibrium also can appear in this kind of 2 cross 2 simultaneous game. This is 2 cross 2 game it is called 2 cross 2 game in the sense that two players are playing each of them have two strategies in that way 2 cross 2. Okay. So, in that way so many games in the real life is there you will see that uh, 2 cross 3 kind of games are there no uh, rock paper scissor can you can, I, I, I am sure that many of you know that rock paper scissor game where 2 parties are playing, but each of them have 3 strategies either rock or paper or scissor. Okay. So, it is a 2 cross 3 kind of game. So, so many interesting games are there in real life in fact this kind of this look at here here no whether I am choosing left or right or you are choosing top or bottom that strategically determined okay, where I will get better, where I will get better given his choice or her choice like that right. So, this kinds of strategic interactions are very important in oligopoly market. So, that is why we are first introducing this game theory to familiarize ourselves. Another important game is called prisoner's dilemma game. Let us introduce that prisoner's dilemma game and then we will go to the oligopoly discussion. Prisoner's dilemma game, it is basically the story about a, a, a couple of prisoners. Okay. So, they have been caught uh, with the allegation that they jointly made some crime okay, that is the allegation okay, and this is the payoff structure. Okay. So, this is x So, this is the thing. So, this side prisoner number 1 and that side suppose prisoner number 2. 
Okay. So, story is that uh, two persons are caught with an allegation that they jointly made a crime okay, and they have been put in two different cells in a prison okay, and tomorrow suppose uh, that they will be pro, uh, produced before the court. Okay. So, what is their strategy and accordingly this is the payoff structure. Okay. So, the thing is that this accept, accept means what every prisoner has two options right when judge, judge uh, will ask no whether you made a crime right uh, what uh, he can respond either yes we made, made the crime or no we did not make the crime. So, that is why accept and deny two strategies and similarly prisoner number two also have the same uh, two strategies right and the look at that the payoff structure okay. if uh, and, and this two, two prisoners know they will be produced before the judge. Okay, um, one by one, okay, not simultaneously, but they have to decide what they will tell. Say prisoner number one, what he is telling before the judge, no, that will not be, uh, uh, prisoner number two cannot see that or uh, do not uh, know that, okay, what that person is going to tell judge, right. So, they have to decide, but this payoff structure each of them know, okay. If he deny, if I accept what he will get, what I am getting, uh, I will get in that way everything is known to each of them. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, look at here the payoff structure, it is interesting story is involved. When both of them are accepting, what will happen? Then to just uh, is coming to the decision, definitely they jointly made the crime. So, each of them will get minus 3 minus 3, as if the minus 3 minus 3 basically 3 years of imprisonment. Okay, that uh, minus minus we are okay, minus 3 minus 3. Now, look at here when prisoner number 1 is accepting and prisoner number 2 is denying that means, this cell is generated right that means, what actually they jointly made the crime, but this prisoner number 1 he is a honest person he is accepting that he made the crime, but this prisoner number 2 he is a liar basically he made the crime, but he is denying that he is lying. So, as a result punishment is that kind. So, this prisoner number 1 will be uh, freed, but prisoner number 2 will get more punishment because of his uh, lie. Okay. Exactly the same way here, when prisoner 2 is accepting, prisoner 1 is denying. So, basically prisoner 2 is an honest person, uh, he is uh, telling truth, but prisoner 1 is a liar in this case. So, prisoner 1 is getting more punishment. Okay, and he is getting less and this is minus 1 minus 1 like say some technical kind of thing right. See when you are caught and put in prison and when you are going to be prosecuted before the judge or before the court right there is usually some gap no suppose that that gap they have to in any case by default serve say few days in the prison that is why it is minus 1 minus 1. When both are denying I am also denying other prisoner also denying perhaps there is some uh, benefit of doubt uh, just uh, will give to both of them. So, this minus 1 minus 1 is basically technical thing right. So, this is the thing, uh, this is the story behind the prisoners dilemma game. You will realize that in real life oligopoly market which we will discuss here no cartels and how cartel can break and all cartel we will discuss, cartel we mention if you can remember sometimes back we told OPEC organization of petroleum exporting countries why OPEC cannot maintain high price for long long back we have discussed that, that OPEC actually a cartel, oil cartel no, international few uh, 7, 8 countries uh, who are actually controlling the uh, 75 percent or 80 percent of the entire world uh, petroleum uh, demand. Okay. So, they form a cartel called OPEC. Okay. So, how that uh, cartel uh, usually not uh, maintain high price right by voluntarily cutting their production decision right that we, ha we have discussed sometimes back using the elasticity things. During the short period elasticity is more inelastic or demand for that petroleum product is more inelastic, but over the longer period it is becoming more elastic. Okay. As a result price is uh, not price, price will be above, but uh, income from uh, selling that product will come down because elasticity scenario is changing that we have discussed earlier. right? That is the one side of the story why in the long run or for the longer period they cannot maintain high price. There is an another st strategic behavior involved into the each players within the cartel, each members of the OPEC right and as a result whatever price they will set you know that will break. 
that we will discuss it is a very interesting game and this kind of prisoner's dilemma kind of game is involved there we will discuss we will discuss maybe the next lecture we will discuss that ok oligopoly market more specifically we will discuss in the next lecture today we can complete only the game all kinds of game discussion right. So, look at here what will be equilibrium here equilibrium here look at here it is an unfortunate kind of situation except is a dominant strategy for each of the player ok prisoner 1 from his perspective you look at here he is comparing between these two numbers where he is getting more one case is minus 6 another case is minus 3. So, he is getting more by accepting in vis a vis in these two cases if he compare here is 0 here is minus 1 ok. So, it is also by accepting it is uh, he is getting more ok. Exactly the same way prisoners 2 see he is comparing between these two numbers and these two numbers both the cases by accepting he is getting more. So, accept 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 is a dominant strategy for each of them prisoners 1's dominant strategy is accepting prisoners 2's dominant strategy also is accepting. So, accept is a dominant strategy for each of them. So, naturally this will be the Nash equilibrium in that case ok and each of them will accept the crime ok and they will get 3 years of imprisonment. Although they know that if they each of them deny ok they can get less punishment ok minus 1 minus 1 kind of thing right very well they know. Look the story we told in prisoners dilemma game we told that they have been put in two different cells ok. That means what implication is that before the uh, they are production before the court they cannot uh, jointly uh, or uh, they cannot negotiate or they cannot collude among themselves that hey, they discuss among themselves and they decide ok we will deny it like that. So, that is the purpose of making them into two different cells. Now, suppose even if they are putting in the they are uh, put in the same cell what will happen they will discuss they will discuss among themselves and they will decide that hey, you will deny I will also deny both will deny so that we will get less punishment. But when each of them will produce separately before the judge in the court no each of them will accept why because I, I we, we negotiated and I decided that hey, you tell deny uh, you will deny when judge will ask and you also told me that uh, both of us will deny no. So, I am sure quite sure that he is going to deny right. So, he is going to deny when I know then what I will do I will surely accept because when he is going to deny if I accept I will get 0 even more punish, even more reward minus 1 vis a vis 0 ok. Exactly the same way that other person he knows that I am surely going to deny. So, he will get the incentive to accept because he can improve his benefit even more from minus 1 to 0. So, it is basically although even if they are allowed to negotiate discuss among themselves ok and decide jointly what to do tomorrow ok, but cheating motive cheat the other person ok that motive will make them to accept before the judge ok. So, this cheating motive is very strong in this kind of any kind of within any kind of cartel including OPEC ok that we will discuss we will discuss in uh, specific oligopoly kind of uh, things uh, real life situation and all using some real life example and all we will discuss. So, these kinds of uh, things and uh, whatever oligopoly discussion is there in our syllabus ok mostly concentrating on this prisoners dilemma kind of game. Then the question is why I, I introduce so many other type of games okay, at least battle of success and other kind of thing or another game where there is no that will make you interested ok you will you will you will, you will be getting more and more interest to learn game theory. There are a lot of interesting games are there in there hawk dove game is there scorp uh, scorpion frog games are there so many games are there interesting games are there ok. Uh, uh, kidnapper hostage kind of ga game is there ok. So, kidnapper hostage basically one kidnapper uh, kidnap someone ok he is the hostage and now after kidnapping no he is in a, a dilemma whether to kill the uh, hostage or whether to free him. If he free he will tell he may tell he may not tell also he may will tell or disclose the identity of the kidnapper and if he kill no uh, he will get some uh, less satisfaction or some uh, psychological pain that I am killing someone. 
So, that kind of lot of games are real life very interesting interesting games are there you can you can read you can you can search in Google in internet you can learn oh, those are interesting very. But whatever the oligopoly discussion we will do in, in, in our syllabus mostly on the basis of this prisoner's dilemma kind of game ok. Lot of other games arm race game was there no in, in 1970s no when cold war time was there I, I am sure many of you heard about that USSR which we know that Russia that country its full name was USSR Union uh, of Soviet Union Soviet of Socialist Republic or something like that USSR that is the full name ok and United States of America ok there was an arm race between them ok. So, each of them want to build more and more arm what will happen they will not have that much resource for for their developmental activities within the country right. So, society will lose, but if I bring one of them actually build arm and other concentrate on more social kind of spending right social beneficial kind of spending who is building more arm he will get more powerful in the strategic market or strategic power market globally. Okay. So, there is a strategic interaction involved there also what to do given what other party is going to choose and all those things. So, lot of interesting games are there you can introduce uh, you can you can familiarize yourself also, but whatever minimum game theory discussion is required we have discussed here let us stop today and, and uh, next lecture we will exclusively or quite exhaustively discuss uh, oligopoly market and how what kind of strategic interactions are involved like this kind of strategic interaction and how cartel and how cartel can be uh, broken because of this prisoners dilemmas cheating motive ok. Let us stop here.